there are big ramifications to breaking covenant, especially when you are the leader. Because leadership always is necessary and important, and therefore there's an increased burden of responsibility and ramifications for you messing up as leadership. Don't ever take leadership lightly if you are in it and understand before you decide you want to be in it how much more responsibility and how much more of the ramifications you are going to be facing potentially. Now, I want us to understand something for you men. Not for the ladies. This is going to be a different sort of thing. But for the men, this comes up a lot. And so I, I'm going to say something. It may stir up all kinds of problems in your house, and I'm sorry if it does. But it seems to me after reading this that the men were responsible, like slow-mo, slow -mo, not to allow the desires of the women to lead them into paganism or into idolatry. So if you're a man and married to a woman who is not covenanted, you as the man, ladies, this is different. I'll talk to you, I'll, I'll address you in a minute. But to the men, you cannot allow the Christmas tree in your house. You cannot allow the Easter celebration in your house. Oh, but you don't understand, my wife will divorce me. Sorry about that. It'll be what it'll be. You're covenanted. Try to dwell with understanding. Try to allow her. To, look, if she wants to go to Sunday church, you let her go to Sunday church. You don't go. But she doesn't bring this stuff into your house. She wants to eat bacon, let her go outside and eat bacon. She doesn't bring it into your house. Do you understand that, men? Okay? I know we don't have that problem necessarily in this building as much as probably in the live stream because we, I, I get contacted by a lot of people where the wives or the husbands are not on the same page. Ladies, this is not the same that goes for you. It's his house. It's his authority. He brings it in. Now you get the choice of drawing the line. It's not mandated how you draw that line, but if you want to draw the line and say, if you bring that in the house, I'm done, that's up to you. That's your relationship with your husband. The men, you must draw this line. Ladies, you don't have to draw this line. It's his house. But you may not want to continue to stay in a house that's like that all the time. I'm not encouraging issues in the husband-wife situation. I'm not encouraging divorce. I'm just trying to tell you that here it shows Shalomo brought in the women and that wasn't just the problem. He allowed them to turn his heart to want to please them. And so some of you men will tell me, but my wife will be all mad and angry and this and that, and I want to please my wife. But see, that's a problem right here. That's a problem right here. Now, I know it's a different situation in some ways because it's much more awful when you didn't Pick that wife. See, Solomon picked his wives after he was covenanted and he knew they weren't. So he made that dumb choice. But some of you got married where you were both where you both were, and then one of you came out. And so that's not really the other one's fault that Yahweh only opened one of your eyes. But it's still, I'm just seeing for myself, I'm seeing when I counsel, I say the same thing. I say, men, it's your house. You have to protect your house. That may cost you. It says that in the New Testament. You may lose sisters, brothers, husbands, wives, parents over this decision to be covenanted. And so that's the key that we want to make sure we have here. But ladies, if he wants to bring this stuff in the house, you can choose or not choose to tolerate it, but you don't participate. If he brings in the Christmas tree, you don't put anything on it, you don't decorate it, you don't put presents under it, you don't deal with it. If he wants pork in the house, he brings it in, let him do it. You don't participate with that. That's his thing. It's his house. If that becomes intolerable, that's lots of things can become intolerable, not just covenant issues. Husbands and wives have all kinds of issues that sometimes lead to separation. We want to, if possible, maintain shalom in the home. We want you to stay together. I'm not trying to encourage or advocate breaking apart. But understand, you see what happened to slow-mo. Men, if you don't put your foot down, the house is going into the disaster heap, so to speak. 
You have to put your foot down. That doesn't mean that you tell her she has to keep Torah. That doesn't mean you have to tell her she has to do all these different things. No, she just can't do certain things in your house. Okay? She wants to go do them, she can do them someplace else. Just like if your parents or family members invite you over for Christmas, you get to say, I'm sorry, but I can't come. Because that's not your house. You can't make them not do it, but you can choose not to participate. But if they come over to your house during that time of year, you make it clear you're not bringing this stuff over. I've had to counsel some people whose parents want to come over and bring the tree and bring the this and bring the that. And the men have to step up. See, it's hard because some of these guys are tied to mom's apron strings. And they're totally mama's boys, whatever you think that means. And so mama still rules. And you have to be able to say, mom, it's my house. You're not bringing that stuff in my house. Some of you may not be able to bring those people over your house until a week or two after Christmas just so that you know, because you know they're not trustworthy. They're going to try to do it anyway. You're going to have to step up, stand up, and put that foot down, but do it respectfully. Do not dishonor or shame anybody. Husbands with your wives, do it gently and respectfully, but draw the firm line. Honey, I love you, I understand, but I believe this is important for me and for our, for our family. This isn't happening here. I don't want a divorce, I don't want a problem, I don't want to fight, I don't want to yell and scream, but you married me, hopefully to trust me in leadership, and this is where I am. This is where I'm trying to please my creator, trying to be submitted under that highest authority. Try to get counsel if you need to. But understand, you see what happened to, Slo to Shlomo. And we're going to see this in other places. You break covenant, you get all kinds of stuff taken away from you, and you start getting curses again, and all those other things that you said you would be protected from when you were in covenant. So Shlomo says, I mean, Shlomo is told, I'm taking what you have away from you. Husbands, guess what? Yahweh may choose to take what he's given you away from you if you don't make the stand. Do you want to risk that? Is that what you want to do? Because some of you may wonder, all of a sudden, I don't understand why I just lost my job and my car keeps breaking and all these other things just keep happening. Well, could it be because you've compromised somewhere? And you've not made your stand because some of you like to say things like, well, you know, when Joshua said, as for me in my house, guys, that's got to be your position. As for me in my house, we will serve Yahweh. That doesn't mean you can make your wife do. But you can choose to decide if that's going to be so problematic where that goes. Same thing for the wife. If your husband's not going to all the respect and, and, you know, where you need to be. Now, thankfully, a lot of the counseling I do, there has been wives who's gotten their husbands to allow them to not put the Christmas stuff out. And it's worked fairly well. And the husbands have respected their wives' journeys. I'm just encouraging you that to be covenanted is going to require an incredible amount of internal strength and fortitude. To walk in covenant, to maintain covenant, you're going to have to dig deep for that strength. It could be a quiet strength, a gentle strength. That's what we call meekness. Meekness is not a doormat or some sort of just, you know, weak person. It's quiet, gentle strength. But it's strength. And so you need to be meek with that quiet strength. Shlomo messed this up. Let's learn the lesson from Shlomo, amen? <laughs>